in a reverted epicyclic gear train the arm a this is the arm carries two gears b and c so gear b and c and a compound gear d e so here d e is a compound gear b and c are two gears the gear b measures with gear e gear b measures with gear e and the gear c measures with gear d gear c measures with gear d right this you can see from the picture the number of teeth on gears b c and d are 75 30 and 90 respectively number of teeth on gear b that is 75 gear c that is 30 and gear d that is 90 respectively so number of teeth on b is given c is given d is given but e is not given so i think we probably we may have to find the e find the speed and direction of gear c when gear b is fixed right when b, gear b is fixed and the arm a makes 100 rpm clockwise right so when this b is fixed and r make 100 rpm clockwise like this what would be the speed of the gear c we'll put the data into format tb number of teeth 75 tc number of feet on c that is 30 td number of feet on d that is 90 na speed of arm a is 100 rpm clockwise right so this is all the data now we will put it into the tabular form right before that in this gear we can see c that is radius of c plus radius of d is equal to radius of b plus radius of e right so from this you can easily find the number of teeth of e right because if this is b radius of b and this is radius of e you can see the radius of b plus the radius of e will be equal to here you see this is c right from here to here this is c and from here to here this is d right so c plus d right so from this you can find the number of t we'll see db plus de right db plus de that is diameter of b plus diameter of e is equal to dc plus dd right dc plus dd we can have it in the r also right either we can have it in the radius or we can have it in the diameter doesn't make much difference since the number of teeth on each gear for the same module are proportional to their pitch circle diameters therefore so when we substitute it with the module and pitch circle diameter that will give you m is equal to d by t right when you add these d's and m is going to be same right your t's are going to be proportional right so we know m is equal to d upon t and we know for the meshing of these gears m need to be same right so m is same only d and t are the variance right so if it is db plus de which can be equal to dc plus dd we can take it in the same as the t also right because m is going to be same so da upon ta is going to be equal to db upon db right so this one db plus de is equal to dc plus dd we can have it proportionality in the naming of t that is teeth also right this is the term of diameter we can directly convert in the name of portionality to the teeth so tb plus te is going to be equal to tc plus td right so we have the number of teeth on b is there c is there d is there we need to find the e right so when you make te as the subject te is equal to tc plus td minus tb right minus tb so tc we know that is 30 td we know that is 90 minus tb that is minus 75 that is equal to 45 right so now we have found the number of teeth on e right now we have found it now we are going to find the velocity of b right that's a question that's a final question right find the speed and direction of c when gear b make this many 
uh, B, B is fixed and the arm is next. This many rotations clockwise. So finding the speed and direction of the gears is the prime task. For that, we need the number of teeth on E and we have found it. Now we are going to move ahead with the question. So we will uh, make this table as usual. Arm fixed, compound gear D, E, rotated through plus one revolution, right? Plus one revolution. So arm, we usually keep it in fixed direct, fixed uh, condition first, right? So arm fixed mean that is zero. Compound gear rotated making one rotation, that is one. So for that gear B is making how many rotation and gear C is making how many rotation. So here we have compound gear. So we will have two charts, right? One is for gear B and the other one is for gear C. Here D and E are going to make only one column because this is a compound gear, right? So whatever the main, um, in this is making he is also going to make the same end, right? So now we have to construct two tables for, I mean, two columns for B and C separately, right? So if compound gear DE, that is this DE makes one rotation, how many rotations the B will make? You see here, B is in contact with the E, right? B is in contact with E. So which means if E is making one rotation, B is going to make TE by TB rotations, right? I repeat, if B is going to make one rotation, sorry, if D, this is going to make one rotation, B is going to make TE upon TB rotations. If you see here, if A is making one rotation, your B is going to make TA upon TB rotation, right? TA upon TB rotation. We apply that is same thing here. If your E is going to make one rotation, your B is going to make TE upon TB rotations, right? And when you consider C, C is in contact with gear D, right? C is in contact with gear D. So when your gear D is making one rotation, C is going to make TD upon TC rotations, right? TD upon TC rotations. This minus, you know, since they are moving in the opposite directions. So if B is moving in the clockwise direction, definitely C is going to move in the anti-clockwise direction, right? If B is moving in the anti-clockwise direction, C is going to move in the clockwise direction, right? So that's why this minus is. This minus is particularly for the purpose to direct only the direction. It has nothing to do with the magnitude, right? So if I am talking DE, right? So you see here, B and DE are in machine. B and E are in machine. Similarly, C and D are in machine, right? C and D are in machine. So compound gear DE, if this DE is making a complete revolution, right? When we talk about B gear, we don't need to care about D, right? Because B is only in contact with the E, right? B is only in contact with the E. So if D, E is taken into care, but B and E are making same amount of rotations, right? With the same speed, right? Because this is a compound gear. All right. So if you consider B, then you will consider only E for the uh, your notation purpose. And if you consider C, now you will be considering only about the D. You are not going to uh, care about the E, right? Because B is in mesh with E and C is in mesh with D, right? Arm fixed and compound gear D, E make X revolutions. So now, as the next step, we will fix the arm and give X revolution for this compound gear D, E. So if this is moving with X direction, uh, rotations, I will multiply everything with X. X into zero, zero. X into plus one plus X. X into minus T, E by T, B. That is minus X into T, E by T, B. X into minus T, D by T, C. That is minus X into T, D by T, C. Right? Now I'm going to add plus, uh, plus Y because if the movement happened by the arm, right? So for that, I will add plus Y everywhere, right? So arm um, A plus Y, compound gear D plus Y, 
here b plus y and here c plus y everywhere i am adding plus y so this plus y is for the moment of arm total motion then we will see the total motion so at summing up everything so here arm a only y come on here de x plus y right y is the arm's movement and x is its movement gear b plus y minus x into t by t b plus y minus x into t by t b and gear c right gear c plus y minus x into t d by t c right plus y minus x into t d by t c so we know t c t d t e t b every t is we know right and x s and y s which are given in the question right a is fixed and other one is moving right so this everything is given in the question right so based on that we will substitute it and we will find the answer right since the gear b is fixed okay so in the question it is given b is fixed right so it means gear b is fixed therefore from the fourth row of the table right so from the fourth row of the table right from the fourth row of the table uh, what we have to find is c is mover right y minus x into te by tb right y minus x into tb by te by tb right t by tb so the motion of b is asked right motion of b is asked y minus x into te by tb te we have found 45 tb which is given 75 that is equal to 0 right so 45 by 75 is equal to 0.6 right so y minus 0. Point, okay it's not 0.6 it is 0.6x okay so y minus 0.6x is equal to 0 right there is an x no so this is 6 mixed over there y minus 0.6x is equal to 0 this is one equation also the arm a makes 100 rpm clockwise right and it is said in the question itself arm a is making 100 rpm clockwise right so usually we take anti clockwise as positive so here it is given this is clockwise so i will take that is as negative right so y is equal to minus 100 so i have one equation y minus 0.6 x is equal to 0 i have another equation y is equal to minus 100 so if i substitute this minus 100 over here i will find x right so minus 100 minus 0.6 x is equal to 0 so it means 0.6 x is equal to minus 100 right which is equal to x minus 100 minus 0.6 x is equal to 0 or x is equal to minus 100 by 0.6 right Minus 100 by 0.6. That is equal to minus 166.67. Right. So x is found now. X is the uh, right. X is the velocity. X is equal to minus 100 by 0.6. That is equal to minus 166.67. Now we have found the x. Right. From the fourth row of the table, speed of gear C. Right. speed of gear c so you see here speed of gear c can be given by the equation y minus x into t d by t c right y minus x into t d by t c so y minus x into t d by t c y is given in the equation minus 100 minus x x we have found minus 166.67 so this minus into this minus plus 166.67 right 166.67 into t d by t c number of teeth on d it is given 90 number of teeth on c it is given 30 so this is 3 into 166 that would be coming around 300 right no not 300 500 right uh, minus 100 right so 500 minus 100 that is 400 so this and this if you solve this will be coming 3 Three into one hundred sixty-six. That is five hundred. Five hundred minus hundred. That is four hundred RPM. Right. So since you got the answer is in plus. Okay. Now we are moving in anti-clockwise direction. So now speed of C is four hundred RPM clockwise direction. Right. But here I have two gears. Right. So see now I have 
these two can be considered as one gear because this is a compound gear. Now we are creating one for C and one for B, that's all. So one for C and one for B. So here your C is in contact with D and B is in contact with E, that's all. Right. So when you go for anything related to B, only your B and E will be in act. You see here, B and D, B and D, B and E will be act. When you talk anything about this one, your C and D will be in act. Why these two are missing? So you see here, C and D, C and D, C and D. So table is same, right? Only thing is, whatever the gear which is meshing, we will apply that one. That's all. Okay.